Good afternoon, and welcome to Interview Showcase. I'm Bobby Matheson. Today we're talking about independent online media. With me is Peter Tchaikovsky, creator of Rock Paper Cynic, a website featuring comics, music, and video by Mr. Tchaikovsky. Uh, welcome, Peter, and thanks for coming in. Oh, hi. Thanks for having me. Um, now, we've got a lot to cover on this subject, but uh, first I think it would be important for us to know uh, uh, a little bit more about you and what you do. So uh, you've, been, uh, you've been making comics uh, online and video and these songs for a while now. Yeah. Uh, when, what got you into this? Uh, mostly it was realizing that the people who, who write comics online and the people who I admired, so uh, folks like Randall Monroe who writes XKCD and Joey Camo and uh, Emily Horn who write uh, A Softer World are just people who decided to actually take the time and take the initiative to start posting online and start picking up a following. So that was inspiring and it was nice to know that you didn't have to have talent to be, uh, to, to at least to publish online. Uh, <laughs> and I didn't, so it was nice to... Uh, to have that reassurance. So originally a lot of these comics started off in, in my notebooks or scrawled in the margins of, of notes during class uh, and I got around to digitizing them and trying to post them and that was I think around Halloween of 2008 okay. um, and somewhere at about the 50 comic mark people started passing links around and, uh, uh, and I started trying to make it a more regular schedule okay. and, uh, and by that point things sort of picked up and it became a regular comic. Um, but before uh, October 2008, that's as far back as your archives online go, have, yeah. have you done anything um, outside of that? Like uh, bef or before that, have you done any like <laughs> school newspapers or... Uh I did a, a really terrible comic called The King of Kings, um, which I think ran a total of uh, three strips in The Watch at University of King's College. Um, and uh, and it, was, it was truly an awful comic. Um, so nothing that I'd admit to. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, yeah. I, I understand where you're coming from there. Um, you, you brought uh, your notebook that you've had from before you even started posting these. Yeah. And um, uh, Poser, would you want to explain these? Sure. So um, the notebook there, which was actually hand-bound and made for me by a friend named Kiamo, oh. um, is a, a funny little artifact. I have kind of I, I put it in a, a, sh a desk um, and forgot about it for a while. Okay. And uh, it's where I was just putting down little pencil sketches when I was bored before I wrote the comic. Just ideas that I wanted to have in hand or, or little drawings. And most of them are stick men and they're fairly awful. Um, <laughs> and uh, little ideas you don't want to forget. Yeah, but I think this 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 really sort of I don't know, it, to me it really describes where, um, where most public ideas come from. They start off in a very private place as, as personal sketches. Um, and so there's actually a, a comic here on, uh, on the left, um, or the, I guess the right hand page as you're reading it, um, which became the basis for um, a comic that eventually went online and that became a poster print and is now the title of a second webcomic that I write called Little Worlds. Oh. Um, and the idea was, was actually stolen from Neil, Neil Gaiman originally. Um, so in the Sandman Chronicles, he's a character describing how everybody has these crazy, insane worlds inside their head and, and that's quite normal. Uh, and the idea that, that insanity, or at least um, having all these ideas and these worlds in your head is normal. Um, and that's I, the basis of this Little Worlds? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, that, that, that insanity is actually quite a normal and, and regulating force um, <laughs> for for people, and that you know we all have a little bit of crazy in us. Uh, I um, suppose. True enough. Uh, yeah. Is 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 uh, this on uh, online anywhere? Or yeah, is it, yeah. So this uh, um, the, the the print here um, uh, in that actual form was posted online. I think in, in early December of 2009 or maybe in late 2008. Oh, yeah. um, and it was one of my personal favorites. I liked the image, which is a bit of a corny image, but I, mm. I, I liked the image that I put with it. And, and I liked the idea and how it was a very quick idea to express that, you know, um, there are 1,000 little worlds inside your head, but that doesn't make you crazy. It makes you sane. Yeah. Um, um, little worlds is really interesting as well, um, uh, visually. Anyways, mm -hmm. it's the... Uh, Photographs, uh, like digitally manipulated into a, a comic book form. Yeah. Uh, and uh, do you feel that this is um, kind of unique as to you know, you're an independent comic book artist? You don't have any big company telling you what to do. Do you feel that if you were with some larger company, would you still be doing the same kind of idea, or is this? I don't think so. Little Worlds is weird, um, and. Narratively, it takes a few risks that uh, I don't necessarily, in retrospect, maybe weren't a great idea. I mean, it starts off with a two-page dream sequence, and dream sequences kind of a strange people, and sometimes they're intriguing, and sometimes they're mysterious, but they can also be pretentious, and they can also really, really beg the patience of the reader. So yeah. I, I kind of regret doing that now, um, but I was a little in love with the prose I'd written for it, and was not able to, to yeah. um, 
uh, to just to, leave it alone. Yeah, exactly. So I, I indulged myself, and now I regret that. Um, so I don't think I'd be allowed to do things like that. I don't think I'd be allowed to make mistakes publicly if I was um, sort of under the thumb of an editor. But that's kind of the charm of independent oh, media absolutely. as well. You know? Yeah. Um, and, and your comics and your you know uh, sketches and everything are, are on your main website. Yeah. You've got a YouTube page that has your, your videos, and yeah. you have a MySpace page that has... Uh, your music. Yeah. Um, do you feel that these uh, big media websites have changed independent media in any way? They have because they've given, um, well the problem with independent media is that they don't have structures that really um, consistently publish things the same way. And by publish, I just mean make public. Yeah. Um, so you didn't have, the, you, you, you and somebody um, performing music on the west coast couldn't uh, find in the same venue a way, a way of publishing your work. But with MySpace, everyone, it's, it's a level playing field. Everyone publishes in the same way. They provide content in the same way, and they have the same freedoms. Um, and I find that's a really beautiful equalizing force, and it's a great way of, of um, uh, creating communities online that couldn't exist yeah. without that environment. Uh, do, you, do you feel that uh, like these websites, the YouTube and the MySpace, do, do they bring in people to your website, or do, do your pe people read your comics and... <laughs> get turned on to your YouTube and MySpace page? For the most part, the uh, the traffic is outgoing from the main website to you know the satellite websites, the MySpace okay. page, the YouTube page, um, because not many people have interest. A lot of what I do is kind of in-jokey, um, so it, it helps to come from the comic where you have knowledge of what's going to be coming at you in the videos, going to the videos. But some people have migrated the other way. It does happen on occasion. It does? Um, and you're, you're generally, as a creator, aware of what content is only going to be funny to people who have already been um, reading your things and listening to your music. Mm. And what content will be funny to, to newcomers? And I kind of every every few months I try and put out something that is going to invite people in. And uh, so you have a kind of a closer connection to the, your regular viewers and your your, your fans. Yeah. Um, do, do you find that uh, like social networking websites like like Facebook and Twitter have a role to play in, in what you do? Uh, they do, and I have not been very good at, at sort of harnessing the, um, <laughs> the the rising and impossible power of Twitter. Um, I, I only recently, I think last week, maybe the week before, added Twitter, uh, and I've accumulated a grand total of, I think, 45 followers at last check. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and I haven't been using it very well, uh, I don't think. Um, so I like Twitter. It lets you create and track conversations between artists. It lets you know um, sort of the, the daily lives of these great creative icons. A yeah, public notebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's, that's a great metaphor for it. It's, um, a, it's a public notebook. Uh, a lot of your work, or m most of it, uh, all of it that I've seen, is mm -hmm. licensed under uh, Creative Commons. That's right. Uh, and that's really big online now, uh, yeah. the, cre the whole Creative Commons. Do, do you think that this is important in a lot of... Uh, do you think that there's something special about Creative Commons? I do. There's a really fantastic um, documentary, I think paid for by Canadian taxpayers, called RIP. I think it was funded by a, g a government grant, um, which, which I really like. Um, anyway, I really liked the documentary, and it was about Creative Commons. And I'll summarize really quickly sort of the essential thesis of the documentary is that creators create from what's happened before. Mm -hmm. So you need to have um, a, a rich archive of public materials from the past to be able to manipulate those materials and create products for the future. As, as you said, the, the Little Worlds idea was taken from a Neil Gaiman quote. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah. And the actual expression Little Worlds doesn't come up in that quote, which I'm, I'm happy about because I don't want to be, you know, actually plagiarizing. Yeah, um, true enough. And I try to be pretty pretty honest about my borrowing. Um, but, you know, that, that idea is entirely inspired by him. And, and I'm sure if he got angry enough, he, he might be able to come after me with lawyers. But... Um, uh, but he, he seems like a nice man. Yeah. Well, I'm uh, Little Worlds is uh, the other uh, proceeds to Little Worlds go to charity anyway. So I, yeah, yeah, exactly. There's there's no there's no money to go after. Um, yeah, they go, they go to Free the Children, um, which is a ca ch a charity based in Canada, but it, it does uh, development work internationally. The, their main goal is sort of to build schools in developing countries to provide infrastructure and keep kids out of um, or away from uh, recruiters into uh, child soldier armies. That is, that is fantastic. Um, we're we're, we're kind of running low on time. Um, okay. uh, I'd like to uh, thank you for coming in for one. And I'd uh, if anybody out there wants to uh, check out more of Peter's work, you can go to rockpapercynic. Uh, dot com. Uh, thank you for for coming in again. And uh, if is, do you have any last things you want to say about uh, your, uh, your, your website or your or what you do? <laughs> briefly, what I'll say is that um, webcomic artists really, really thrive on feedback from, uh, from their readers. So writing to webcomic artists, it may seem like a strange gesture, but they really appreciate it. And they like to know that they're, that they're being read and that they're supported. So, so check out his website uh, at rockpapercynic.com. Uh, uh, thank, thank you. This is Peter Tchaikovsky with me in uh, the guest seat. Uh, I'm Bobby Matheson, and uh, thank you for tuning in. Have a great night.